All right, we're still in section uh, four and eight. We're looking at inverse trig. Um, so we have sine of cosine inverse, and we want to rewrite it in terms of x only. So get kind of get rid of all this sine and cosine stuff. So just like we've been doing, we'll draw the triangle for cosine. So cosine of theta will be x or x over 1. So here's x and here's 1. It looks just like the unit circle. And remember the range of cosine inverse is quadrant 1 or 2 because it's 0 to pi. So we know our triangle has to be in one of these two quadrants. Since it's positive, it has to be in the first quadrant. So then if we want to find sine, let's find the third side. Uh, sometimes we call it y, but we want everything in terms of x. So we'll say x squared plus y squared is 1. So y squared is 1 minus x squared. So y is the square root of 1 minus x squared. It's positive because we're in the first quadrant. Um, we can't be down here because that's not in the range of cosine. Cosine inverse. Not theta, let's say x. So we know it's not down here. So that's why the range is really important. All right, so we drew the triangle, and so now we'll say sine of cosine inverse of x or sine of theta, which is cosine inverse of x is just solving for this angle, will be equal to opposite, which is now 1 minus the square root of 1 minus x squared over hypotenuse. And that's it. So this crazy expression is equal to the square root of 1 minus x squared. And this is actually going to be useful when you get to calculus, as weird as this seems. Um, but it'll help us get rid of expressions that kind of involve 1 minus x squared in a square root. And that's it. You can't square root as difference, so we're done. All right, what do we have next? I think we've got to do one more, arc tangent. So we're only going to do arc sine, arc cosine, and arc tangent. Um, Arc secant, cosecant, and cotangent exist, um, but they're not that common, so we're going to just not use them. They're not used often, so why bother? Um, so arc tangent, or inverse tangent, same idea as the others. Um, if y equals arc tangent, then x equals tangent of y. So again, we're outputting an angle. Um, if you don't remember the graph of tangent, the range was all real numbers, so our domain of the inverse is all real numbers. And then the range, these should not have or equals. Um, the range was negative, will be negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 because we're going to restrict it to a single cycle. So here's our single cycle. And then if we reflect it, it basically turns into a sideways version of that. So, um, pi over 2 and negative pi over 2 are not included because they make asymptotes. All right, let's find a couple values of this. So tangent inverse of 1, same idea. Um, I'll draw the unit circle or a triangle. Uh, so tangent inverse of 1 means when does tangent equal 1? That's when x and y are the same. So I think that was pi over 4, right? It was the root 2 over root 2 and root 2 over root 2 and 1. Right, so my ratio of y over x is 1, and that was at pi over 4. Um, there are other angles that make this true, but we're trying to stick within the range of negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. All right, let's do another composition. So we're going to do arc tangent of five, negative 5 thirds. So the range for arc tangent are these two quadrants. I think because it's negative, we're going to have to be down here. 
So negative, negative 5 thirds for arctangent, right? So negative 5 over 3 will be y over x. Um, the y has to be negative because we can only be in these two quadrants. So we're not using the quadrants where x is negative. Um, because again, the range of arctangent. So I'm going to find the third side, and then we will find sine. So 3 squared plus negative 5 squared is c squared. c is always positive. Um, the hypotenuse will always be positive. So we get 9 plus 25 is c squared. What's that? 34. So c is square root 34. The hypotenuse is always positive. Um, it's just its own thing. It's not an x or a y. And so then we'll just find sine of this angle. So sine will be opposite over hypotenuse. So opposite is negative 5. Hypotenuse is square root 34. And you can leave it. We could practice rationalizing one more time. Square root 34, square root 34. And we get negative 5 root 34. And then the bottom just becomes 34. So if you're looking at the book, it uses identities. I think the triangle is way easier and way more efficient. Um, but if you prefer identities, you are welcome to do that. Um, but I think when you get to calculus, you're going to need the more efficient method, which is this. All right, I'll see you back for the next video.